G'day viewers and welcome to the fish room build episode 4 with a little bit of a tour thrown in. Now I know I haven't done a fish room update in quite a while but I have been busier than a bricklayer in Baghdad so a short video is a good video so let's get right into it. Now we're going to start today's video outside with my battery backup system. In case the power goes out I can still keep my air pump and filters running. Isn't that right Henry, hey? So let's have a look. Now I won't go too in depth into this because I do have a video on the one I have on my tank inside. So if you're interested, go and check that one out. Now the brains of the operation is this Renergy UPS inverter, which means it runs on the mains power until the power goes out and then it switches over and it'll run off these two batteries. They're deep cycle batteries that I have wired up in parallel. So that, that doubles the capacity. And it has a battery charger here to charge those batteries up when they get used. And also just a little meter, so we know where our batteries are at. Now we have two leads that come off that inverter. Now one lead runs up to my pond air pump, and I use the pond air pump so it can be outside to reduce a bit of noise inside. So it's weatherproof, it's got a really long cord and it supplies plenty of air. And it's just plumbed into the wall up there, simple. While the other lead sneaks up behind the hot water service and using the existing hole for the drains, goes in through that flange inside to supply any internal or canister filters. So when the power goes out, they don't go out as well. So it just slits through there and there's a bit of rubber, sticky rubber around there just to seal it all up nice. Well that's it for outside, now it's time to head inside. Now the first thing you'll notice viewers is the lack of a sink. It was handy, it was good to have, but I took it out because I needed the room. So I've moved the rack two feet closer to that wall, which gives me two feet up that end, which is what I'm going to need later on, because eventually there'll be a big tank along that wall. And that extra couple of feet will come in very handy. And up the top there is the air loop, which goes all the way around the room, supplying air to all the tanks and there's a little steel valve screwed in. Actually, I'll show you how I did that because it's pretty neat. So pretend, if you will, viewers, that this piece of pipe is up in the loop on the wall. So I made up this simple little jig, point the arrow to where you want the hole, turn it round. That goes in on an angle, you can see that. Fill your hole. Simple as that. Then screw the steel fitting in. The steel fitting with a thread. How simple is that? And that way they, they're all on the same angle and they all line up, which makes it look very pretty indeed. And another change is to the rack filling system. I now have an individual tap for each tank. That way I can just sit down, put my feet up and have a coffee and fill all of the tanks during a water change without even having to get out of the chair. It's not that I'm lazy, it's just that I'm efficient. And that's where the lead from the backup battery supply comes into the room through the same hole in the wall as the drain pipe. And underneath the rack at this end, it's all my water changing stuff in that box. Slides away for easy storage. And I've also added a second bilge pump siphon starter so I can drain two tanks at the same time. And this one has a bigger fitting on it so it can have a larger diameter hose to drain those bigger tanks quicker. And if you're interested in how all that works, have a look at the fish room build video number three. Then we come along to underneath this side of the rack. First off, have my net box. So called because it's a box which contains all of my nets. And if we get down on the floor, we can have a look up underneath to where I've mounted the power boards up nice and high so all those cords are tidied up out of the way and nothing's on the floor in case we have a bit of a 
mishap and end up with water all over the floor. And up this end, have a couple of little grow lights and just some containers there, growing some moss and a few ground covers. God help, I'm being attacked. Help! And so I needed somewhere to mount a couple of small canister filters that can service some of the tanks on the top rack. So I had a spare bit of ply, so I quickly whipped up this little cabinet. So the canister filters will sit on the top there. Also gives me somewhere to put the fish food and the aquascaping tools. And down the bottom, plenty of room for the CO2 bottle. It doesn't take up much room and it blends in nicely. Very handy. Now as we venture further around the room, here's my fold-out step ladder, which I definitely need to reach the tanks on top of the rack. There's a vacuum cleaner that I accidentally left in here after vacuuming the floor for the video. And this here is Fish, who belongs to a mate of mine I'm just babysitting. And once Fish is gone, we'll be putting a big tank in here. And that's just my quarantine tank on the corner there. It's got a few shrimp and a few ottos in it. Next to that's another little quarantine slash grow out tank. It's got the better and a few coolie loaches inside. And that there's my plant farm. I've been growing some rotala and a few other bits and pieces for some planted tanks. Which brings us to the plant propagation project, which seems to be going all right. It's a little bit overgrown. And if we zoom in there, that's Ludwigia just growing at the top and I'll just let it go and see how big it gets. Interesting. Next to that's just a little tank, a little bit overgrown, just with some shrimp and some endlers. And that there's my parlor palms. For viewers that have been around a while, you would have seen the video where I made those lids and how I mounted those plants in. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. And that's how much those palms have grown. Beautiful. And in there, I have some, what have I got in there? I've got a pair of breeding angels, some black neons, a few cherry barbs, and some butterfly plecats. Now you might have noticed this tank's all covered up. That's because it's a bit of a secret project known only to myself and the princess of plants herself, Tara, from Tara's Tank Friends. So this will be revealed in the next few weeks. So if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out on it. Next to the project tank brings us to my grow out tank where we're growing out some geophagus babies and some of my angels. They're coming along nicely there. There's quite a few geos in there. I don't know what I'm going to do with all of them. So if you're in Australia and want some geophagus brachybrancus, just let me know. And there's a few of the angels that have bred from the pair in the other tank. Also hiding down there around that filter, I think I've about half a dozen snowball plecos, but yeah, you might as well not have them because you very rarely see them. Now up on the top row of the rack, first off this is a little planted project tank I've been working, it's been up and running for about a week and I did film putting it together so that'll be another video to re be released in the future. If you've got any idea of what you think would be a good fish to put in here, let me know in the comments. Next to that, just a, another quarantine tank, it's just got a few ember tetras in there growing out. Next up is my plenum experiment tank. It has a slow moving plenum with four or five inches of kitty litter and some laterite in it underneath to see if we can get anoxic conditions to reduce our nitrates. And at the moment, it just contains some more of my little baby angels. Aren't they gorgeous? Next door, just another grow out tank, nothing special. 
Well, viewers, that's about it for this update. So if you've made it this far, I'd like to say thanks. And if you like leaving likes, leave a like. Also, if you haven't noticed, I scored a mug from my good friend and Australia's favourite Canadian, Chris from Stubbs Aquatic. So thank you, Chris. Well, that's it for this one, viewers. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I don't have the answers, and I will stick with the name of that now. But, you know, whatever you need to do, if you want to turn it off, it's happening.